We welcome you to Baseball Night New York, presented by Land Rover. Doug Williams, alongside SNY MLB insider Andy Martino, Daily News baseball writer Anthony McCarron, and Sal Licata. And let's take the lead. After all of that, somehow the Mets won the Yoan Cespedes sweepstakes. They've agreed to a deal worth $75 million over three years with an opt out after the first year. The deal is pending a physical. And let's talk about how this deal came together, Andy. Well, look, I mean, first of all, having just watched that <laughs> montage for the first time, what strikes me about it, you know, in, in all seriousness, as a reporter, you go back over what you've done and what you've heard and how you've put it out there, and you go, did I get anything wrong? And obviously, I need to apologize for condescending to the wonderful 40% of Mets fans <laughs> by saying, oh, you poor people. All right, that was a little much. Uh, but really, the information that we were putting out there didn't change. You know, the first thing that struck me, Sal, when you said the Mets don't want him, and that was set up by our wonderful uh, production uh, staff as like a haha sell was wrong. It wasn't wrong. You were right. They didn't want him. They never pursued this player. Uh, so as I get into uh, how did this come together, it was the most remarkable thing. And the reason why we didn't think it was going to happen is what the Mets did was say, we're not really interested in you. We're just going to sit here with our short-term interest uh, and just sit there and do that. We're not going to wine and dine you. We're not going to sweeten anything. And if you want it, take it. That was always the thing. It remained the thing. Cespedes came back to them. Tremendous this remarkable moment uh, for the Mets and Sandy Alderson for pulling that off, and, and quite a concession by Cespedes uh, as a player who took fewer years. We've never seen that before. So they didn't go see Mamma Mia. They didn't take <laughs> no. Fresco by Scotto or anything. I they were it. never interested. I, I, they just pushed what, what they, they were offered in the middle of the table and said, you know, go ahead. Uh, you, that's what we're going to do, and you know, you can circle back if you want. And Sal, looking forward, this Mets team, is it propelled to World Series contender, World Series favorite for the Met fan? How do they now view this team? Well, first of all, to me, I think the most important thing was for the organization to show that the priority was getting back to the World Series and trying to win it. Now, they were in low case space before, but the fact that they ponied up $27.5 million for one year on a player when Alderson himself has said after David Wright, no more $100 million players, no more $20 million contracts, that showed me all that needed to be shown. And I think that they should be favored to not only win the division, but to go far in the National League, hopefully win the World Series. It doesn't always play out like that. But the most, and regardless if it does or not, they may not win the World Series. These teams load up the Nationals last year, Blue Jays before. It doesn't happen. But the fact that the organization is all in shows me that they are willing to do whatever it takes to get a shot at winning the World Series. I mean, that was not the case always. To me, adding the hitter to that pit, to the pitching, and, and the guy, I like the stuff that they did earlier this season. Maybe not the Azdrubal Cabrera mm -hmm. move as much, but I mean, they lengthened the lineup, and now they've got the thump in the middle of it, and I think that they're the class of the National League with the Cubs right behind them. And Andy, we were talking before the show, you were mm -hmm. saying that the Bastardo signing actually may have filled a hole a little better than the Cespedes yeah. signing, but do you think it should increase expectations signing? him? Oh, absolutely. And, and the expectations for the ownership and the front office and baseball people, everybody to invest more in the team from now on, it creates expectations on the field and off the field. The bar is definitely now higher. And you got to give it to Alderson on this payroll thing. He'd always said that it was about flexibility, not dollars. He said, I have the money. Ownership's giving me the money. I can spend it if I want to. I just don't like the long-term deals. To a lot of fans, that sounded like you're just making excuses. Right. The Mets don't want to spend. And that was fair. We had seen any evidence of anything like this, but now it's clear. There's no way that they were going four, five, six years or anything for Cespedes, but they'll give him anything he wants for one year, and this is a one-year deal. He's going to opt out after a year. They're giving him a huge money for one year, and that is what they said they would do. Right. We can't make them seem like they're the Dodgers in terms of spending now. I mean, they did get the Kadire windfall that, you know, for him, him retiring allowed them to spend a little bit more, I think, this winter. I mean, they, they did a good thing here and added to a team that was pretty loaded beforehand, and, you know, you know, that's a good direction. But it's not like they're going to go out and start destroying the free agent market every winter. Yeah, but you know what? That's smarter. That's better. That's how it should be. The fact that they can and are willing to spend if they see it's a good fit under their terms. Teams don't operate like that. That's why I give Alderson all the credit in the world. And I know that when a player does come along that they do like, now they have and will spend the money on them. Yeah, and going forward with the payroll, how do you think the Mets will process this? Is this a sign of things to come, or is this an aberration? Because the Mets well, never thought they'd spend this money, because they thought he would take $110 million yeah. with possibly the Nationals. Yeah, it's a great question. There's this wonderful thing that happens for the Mets on Friday night, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the payroll's $140 now. We, I guess that's what we're going to do. So that's not something that Alderson would just say automatically it's going to be that all the time. But keep in mind, with these pitchers that need to be paid soon, first you either have to pay Matt Harvey or trade him in a year, then the 
Grom's coming up, et cetera, et cetera. This does show the fan that if we want a couple of these guys long term, we can do it. I mean, it's the first indication since the Omar Minai era, since all that trouble that they went through, legal entanglements, everything else, it's the first indication that they can do this if they want to. So that goes forward. And the Met fan sale should put pressure on them from now on to say, keep it up here. This better not be a one time. And I want to show you guys the numbers just in that hot streak that Cespedes had in August and September really was incredible. The way he jolted that team, got the season going. You see the numbers in that short period of games. It's just an incredible amount of production. And Sal, for Mets fans, is that, are you sensing that momentum from the time that he arrived at the Mets to now? They re-signed him, the pitching is back. Are you feeling that this is even going forward a step in the right direction? Now, yes. I, real quick, I don't think it's realistic to expect those numbers again. Right. I don't think Cespedes is, nobody is expecting but those numbers again. since then, this team has been yes, trending upwards. Doug, because it's been a long time, and again, I've been screaming about it. They need to do something, need to try, need to try. Even last year when they were okay and they had great pitching, it didn't start to take off until some of those pieces came in place, and then they got Cespedes and put them over the hump. Now, he's the final piece. They're at, look, they're not a perfect team. Nobody is, but they're as complete as any fan could ever ask. Forget about what the payroll is. They went out there and were aggressive signing this player who's a difference maker in the lineup. He's a force, a presence to go along with the great young pitching, the additions in the bullpen, the better role players, the depth that they have. They're a complete team that should be contending for a World Series. Nothing more you could ask for as a fan. And